Peace and assalamu alaikum family. This is your brother, Malcolm Flex TV, and we are back with another video. And this video is very different from the rest of the videos, right? Because, you know, your brother has done a lot of research, you know, since I've joined the Nation of Islam. <clears throat> and I have been given, you know, a lot of information, all praises due to Allah. But it's something that stood out to me that I've been holding on to and then Never, I've never shared before, you know, I've done a video <clears throat> talking about, you know, Freemasonry and the Nation of Islam. I've never really gone into it <clears throat> the way I'm going to go into it today. If it be the will of Allah. So I would like to first open in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful. All praise is due to Allah for raising up one from among us, the lost found members of the nation of Islam, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, his last and greatest messenger and exalted Christ. And I would also like to bear witness that the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan is divine, warner, teacher in our midst. And I would like to greet the students in the greeting words of peace and paradise. of salamu alaykum. And again, this video is very different, you know, so I just ask if my brothers and sisters just be patient with your brother. <clears throat> and, um, and also, don't take the things that I'm going to say the wrong way, because this is, what I'm sharing is just information, you know, no matter how true and how accurate it may be, it can be up for public scrutiny, you know. And, uh, and I'm just sharing some things that were shared to me, and I want to know if it's right and exact, and if it's legit. And this is concerning our lessons out of the supreme wisdom that is given to us by Almighty God Allah, who appeared to us in the person of Master Fard Muhammad. Okay. I was given some years ago a Q&A, right? And this Q&A is the lessons. And when you read the Q&A that is taking place, it sounds like Master Fard Muhammad is being asked questions by a mason, right? So I'm going to go over those questions and answers, you know, and this is the first time that I've ever done this with this material because I've been sitting and holding on this for a long time and I've let other people hear it and build with them. And um, it seemed legit to those who I've let hear it. But there's still some unsurety, you know, on the origin of this information. And I stumbled across an article from our late and beloved Mother Tainetta Muhammad, may Allah be pleased with our dear sister, who says some things in her article unveiling the number 19 within the final call newspaper that kind of had your brother scratching my head a little bit. And so I read her article before I read this information is Q&A. 
and you all can research it. Um, it's the article called National Treasure and the Nation of Islam. <clears throat> I repeat, National Treasure and the Nation of Islam. So I'm giving you all a disclaimer. I don't know how right and exact this information is that I'm going to read to you out of this Q&A. Okay? So don't take it as if your brother is saying that this is right and exact, this is true, because I don't even know the origin of it myself. But I'm sharing it with you all, right? I think it would be only right to share it with you all. It's 2020. I've been holding this for probably about six years, right? And I don't want to do that no more, okay? But I want to read Mother Tynetta's article, and I'm going to stop at a certain point, okay? Because I want to kind of build you all up into what we're going into, okay? The article is called National Treasure in the Nation of Islam. And she quotes out of the Holy Quran in the beginning. And it says, And when it is said to them, Come to that which Allah has revealed and to the messenger, they say, Sufficient for us is that wherein we found our fathers. What? Even though their fathers knew nothing and had no guidance. Holy Quran, Surah 5, Ayat 104. If one wishes to comprehend any nation, it is crucial to have knowledge of that nation's history and culture. Right? That's a profound statement. Right? Because, again, I'm struggling with the origin of a Q&A. Right? That isn't in the Supreme Wisdom Lessons book. Right? But it is in there. And you all will understand why I'm saying that. So what, what this statement says is profound. It says, if one wishes to comprehend any nation, it is crucial to have knowledge of that nation's history and culture. Minister Farrakhan, making friends for us around the world on his, on his world friendship tour, number three, in 1998. Right? They show photos in Bangladesh. This excerpt comes from the foreword of the book entitled Reclaiming Kangas Khan. As I begin this article, I wish to thank the many believers and officials who I met within the cities of Baltimore, Washington, D.C., Detroit, and Philadelphia who assisted me in the ongoing research and the gathering of information on the early history of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam since its founding in 1930 by Master Fard Muhammad. This gathering of information will be archived as the nation's national treasures. These individuals will always remain in my memory for the rest of my life for their rendering of such respect and honor to their sister is a sign of Allah's love in our hearts to express divine unity of purpose as we are being guided through the most critical period of the spiritual mission of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and his greatest helper, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I recall the words of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad when he came to me and spoke to me about one of his wives who was oft times approached by the faithful in later years following his departure who wanted to learn more about Muhammad's history. I did not realize at that time that he was addressing me as a part of that inner circle of companions who would be placed in that role to serve the nation and the believers, right? She would be a part of that inner circle of the messenger's companions. They were to be a reliable source of information for the succeeding generation of Muslims to come. In the movie, National Treasure, we view a profound reminder of the body of knowledge that we have inherited from the divine teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. 
This body of knowledge has proven to be a national treasure, right? This body of knowledge and information is a national treasure to the nation of Islam, right? This body of knowledge has proven to be a national treasure for the nation of Islam and all of our people around the globe. It is truly our inheritance which is opening up a new world of peace and happiness in the midst of a nation that has robbed us of our birthright, names, culture, and national history. We are evolving as a baby nation in the midst of the most powerful nation on earth. We are now on the threshold of a universal change. As I reported in the last article, this universal change is corresponding to the measurement of 50,000 years in which our nation has, has a complete fall. Right? Now here's the, the important part of her article. Right and why it's relevant to what I'm about to present, what I'm about to present to you all today. Right, I'm going to read. This is Mother Tynetta's article, unveiling the number nineteen, national treasure in the nation of Islam. <clears throat> she said, "Now, Brother Malcolm Fleck, she said." When Master Fard Muhammad revealed himself in the public for the first time in 1930, he met with President Herbert Hoover, who was a member of the Masonic Order. I will repeat that. When Master Fard Muhammad revealed himself in the public for the first time in 1930, <clears throat> he met with President Herbert Hoover, who was a member of the Masonic Order. We have also been taught that there are approximately 3 million Muslim sons who recognize the great architect of the universe. When they have reached the highest degree of their training, at the 33rd degree, they learn the name of God, Allah, and begin their reading of the Holy Quran revealed to Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. So under the sign of Solomon, this is Mother Tanetta Muhammad, so under the sign of Solomon, Master Fard Muhammad appeared as the great architect of the temple to be built to the glory of God, which represents the rebuilding of our people. In the movie National Treasure, we note that the secret of the Freemasons was tied up in deciphering an exact code of letters, numbers, and words that unveils the secret knowledge now being revealed through the divine teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So in secret, the rulers of this world ultimately come to see that the great architect of the universe is Almighty God Allah. Right? Who came and appeared to person of Master Muhammad in 1930. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us. Listen. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that these millions of Muslim sons will come to our aid at a certain time. I'm going to repeat that. Listen. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that these millions of Muslim sons will come to our aid at a certain time. In 1974, he taught us in his Savior's Day speech that there are millions and millions of white people who honor and respect this truth and will come to our aid at a particular time in history. He also stated that they know us. He also stated that they know us. We don't know them. But one day, we would become acquainted with them. Listen. She stated, It is my belief that speaking the language properly, listen, speaking the language properly, and I have to be able to do this myself, and I have to learn the language myself, 
But listen to what she's saying and why it's relevant to what I'm about to present, right? It is my belief that speaking the language properly and using that language in the proper term will release to us everything that has been promised from Master Fahd Muhammad, which is luxury, money, good homes, and friendships in all walks of life. Right? So it's a certain type of language that we have to be able to use in its proper terms to release everything that Master Fahd Muhammad promises, which is money, luxury, good homes, and friendships of all walks of life, according to Mother Tanetta Muhammad. She said, to inherit the kingdom means to purify self and align our minds in thinking with the great architect of the universe whose proper name is Allah. He, Allah, is guardian over all the treasures of the earth and the universe. Right? So, when I first read this article, it kind of tripped me out. Because based on what I had, it kind of made sense what Mother Tanetta Muhammad was saying, right? So again, what I'm about to read to you all isn't anything that I've created. This was given to me by another source years ago, but it was something that I was always a little hesitant on sharing with people. I shared it with a couple people try to get their thoughts, and they thought it was profound, but they didn't know the origin of it as well. So, I, I, I personally believe that it's time for me to share, you know, and and if anybody can help me on where the, what the origins are, you know, of this document, all praise is due to Allah, you know, again, I'm not taking it as this is 100% right, right and exact. But when you hear it, you're going to think like, okay, these are the lessons. So, here they are. Okay? And I'm, kinda, I'm not going to go too fast. Here's the Q&A. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. Question. Who are you? How do you ask? On the square. How am I to know that you are on the square? I am the square, and I am a Muslim. What does the word Muslim signify? The word Muslim signifies a righteous person, the father of civilization, the first family, the tribe of Shabbat, a citizen of the universe. Are you traveling? The response, yes, I am traveling. How are you traveling? By the light of the newborn star. What is the light of the newborn star? Response, Pluto or the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Where is your flag? My flag is in the firmament. Assemble your flag. It's the sun, moon, and star. What does the sun, moon, and star represent? The sun, moon, and star represents Islam. What does Islam represent? Islam is a culture, a philosophy, a religion, which is the science of all life. What does the sun represent? The sun represents freedom. Why does the sun represent freedom? Because the sun is free to all. What does the moon represent? The moon represents equality. Why does the moon represent equality? 
because it is an equalizer which controls the tides of water and keeps the water from overflowing the land. And it also controls the life cycle of a woman, thereby controls all life. What does the star represent? The star represents justice. Why does the star represent justice? Because the star has a direct bearing on the five senses of man. Thus, it signifies the four brothers and the sun. Who are the four brothers? The black, brown, red, and yellow man. And I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to pause right there. And what's significant about that part, about the four brothers and the son, is because in Native American oral tradition, they also refer to the four brothers, right? So, you know, go and do your research on Hopi oral traditions, and uh, you will see that they also refer to the four brothers. Okay, but I'm going to begin again. What does the star represent? The star represents justice. Why does the star represent justice? Because the star has a direct bearing on the five senses of man. Thus, it signifies the four brothers and the sun. Who are the four brothers? The black, brown, red, and yellow man. Who is the sun? The sun is the colored man, or Yaqub's raptured devil, the skunk of the planet Earth. Where can the four brothers be found? They are found on all four corners of the earth. What are they doing? They are standing there on the altar of justice, controlling the elements of time. What is the sun doing? The sun is going to and fro, up and down in the earth, causing confusion with the original family of the earth. Are you traveling? Yes, I am traveling. Where are you traveling? From the east to the west and back to the east again. Pause. And that part right there, you know, where are you traveling? And the response was from the east to the west and back to the east again. And um, when you read the Holy Quran and you study... Um, the, the figure Dual Karnain, Dual Karnain in the Holy Quran, he also traveled from the east to the west and back to the east again. And also, when um, going through the FBI files, the FBI asked the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, you know, uh, Master Far Muhammad's whereabouts, and they asked him, where did he go? And when you read the files, you see that the messenger's response was, was back to Mecca. Right? So he traveled from the east to the west and back to the east again. Right? So I just saw those parallels that I thought was profound and I thought I would share with you all. Right? But I'm going to continue. They asked, are you traveling? He said, yes, I am traveling. Where are you traveling? From the east to the west and back to the east again. Why are you traveling? To raise my dead brothers, the so-called Negroes. And where will you take them once you raise them? Along the straight and narrow path. Where does the straight and narrow path lead? The straight and narrow path leads to the realization of Allah. Where is the realization of Allah? Way beyond. Way beyond what? Way beyond the sun, moon, and stars. Letting you know, uh, pause for a second, letting you know that the realization of Allah is on the spiritual level, right? Let me continue. How may one get there? Through diligent studies, teachings, and practices of Islam. Who are you? 
I am the original man, the Asiatic black man, the maker, the owner, the cream of the planet Earth, God of the universe. How did you become the maker, owner, and God of the universe? Because God is life, and I am life conceived, and what I conceive, I create, and what I create, I own. My, that's a handsome crown you are wearing. Yes, I wear it to protect the temple of Allah. The 12 jewels you see adorned is the 12 necessities of life. Knowledge, wisdom, understanding, freedom, justice, equality, food, clothing, and shelter, love, peace, and happiness, all in sufficient quantity. When did time begin? Time began with Islam. When did Islam begin? Islam has no birth record, no beginning, nor ending. Right? So, it is 70 questions and answers, right, in this, in this lesson. Again, I don't know the origin of it. You know, and um, based on Mother Tanetta Muhammad's article, I'm seeing the parallels, and I'm seeing that the person that are answering these, well, the person that's asking these questions are, see, seems like they are a Mason, and the person that are answering these questions is not only a Muslim, but is Master Far Muhammad himself. Right? So it leaves one to have even more questions. Was this Herbert Hoover or somebody? Somebody that Master Far Muhammad may have met that was in the actual lodge? You know? And is this the language that Mother Tanetta Muhammad was referring to that we must speak in its proper terms in order to release everything that Master Far Muhammad had promised us, which is money, luxury, good homes, and friendships of all walks of life, and that these three million Muslim sons who are in America that we don't know, but they know us, will help and assist us? Is this a part of that national treasure that Mother Tanetta Muhammad was also referring to, you know, which is information, right? And this is information that is falling into my hands, and I didn't know what to do with it for a long time. I've just been sitting on it. But I would like to know your thoughts on this lesson. So this is your brother, Malcolm Flex TV. Peace and assalamu alaikum.